Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly mentoring hour. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Before we could start, I would like to read a scripture portion from Psalm 68, verse 35. O oh God, you are more awesome than your holy place. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time. We surrender ourselves and this time in your heart. We pray that, Lord, you will give us the insights from your word, from the experience of each one of us, Lord. Lord, we pray that even during this time, Lord, you will teach us, you will lead us, and you will guide us. Thank you, Father, for the insights, for the instruction that you give us day after day. Thank you for who you are in our life. And we submit ourselves this time in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you so much for joining in. And we leave this time open. So please feel free to post your questions on the chat. Or you can also unmute and ask. So request each one of us to please go ahead and ask any questions uh, pertaining from your studies or from the ministry area. We keep this time open. It's nice to see. So, yeah, in the meanwhile, as we prepare our questions, in the meanwhile, you know, last week we shared about some of uh, some of us shared about the ministry experience in the area where they are. So, would can I request Kiran if you would like to share about the ministry area, how you serve in your place? Or even we have Elisha. Elisha, would you like to share your ministry experience? Okay, 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 man. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Okay. Um, my ministry is basically. Um, with my denomination, the Church of Pentecost, um, we have voluntary, voluntary um, offices. So um, uh, we are elders. I am an elder of the church. I serve in the youth ministry, and I am currently the um, my area. I am the youth secretary. Um, our activities are basically to the youth, the young people between ages 13 to 35. Those are the categories that in my denomination we consider as young people. We organize prayer meetings, camp, uh, uh, professional and career guidance, we also offer counseling and a whole lot. We organize intercessory prayers. We do devotions with them. And so basically, mm -hmm. we do visit home visits. We visit them in the schools. We also have a schools outreach ministry where we reach out to um, secondary schools and then tertiary institutions within our area and share the gospel with them, encourage them, and pray with them. So 
basically this is my ministry area in Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elisha. That's wonderful. Uh, wonderful to hear that the way you shared and the uh, among the youth and among the students. Thank you so much for sharing. Is there anyone who would like to take time? Take this time and share your ministry experience or you have any questions, please feel free to unmute and ask. Herbert, would you like to share your ministry experience? Uh, thank you so much. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, my ministry experience, uh, we normally have like some uh, fellowships every, every Wednesdays. And uh, within that, we do fasting, and uh, we do preaching, and uh, sometimes we do uh, outreach. We go to uh, some families and we preach. Or oh, some of this, um, some of the disadvantaged families, um, we share with them some items. Uh, like that, like that. Then, uh, of course, Sundays we gather, we pray for worship. We gather in worship, just general Sunday service uh, as usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Dan. That's wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Herbert, for sharing. Uh, it's yes, it's 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 nice to know that we uh, you know each one step out from the comfort zone and take an effort to share the good news with the people and to minister be available for the young and the old there that's nice uh can we get here from milagros would you like to share Or Abraham. Yeah, hello, Pastor. I'm here. Hi, Abraham. Would you like to share about your ministry experience at your place? Um, yes, yes. By God's grace, um, we have been able to start our Sunday evening meetings. And by God's grace, we have a few people in attendance. And um, we've been sharing the word of God, we've been praying and asking God to transform them so that at least we can all stand together and preach the gospel here in Vietnam. And um, uh, my question that I wanted to ask today has to do with my personal experiences, which is sometimes when I'm praying alone, sometimes I feel something like they are pouring oil on my head and sometimes even when I'm meditating, it still comes on my head as if uh, it can be there for like five minutes and then it will go, then it will come again. So uh, I'm still trying to uh, decode whether it is the healing anointing. I don't know how to or what to do when those things come. Is this something that is just normal or I should react to it? There's something I'm supposed to do. So this has been my embedding for some time now. So I would like to ask that one in addition to what I just said concerning my ministry. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham, for the question. Can I request any of our faculty who would like to uh, bring a clarity to Abraham? Um, yeah. Abraham, so, um, yeah, the presence of God, uh, we, you know, uh, we experience it in many different ways. And one of the ways is like you're saying, um, uh, you know, how you feel something like oil uh, coming on you. Uh, so it's God's presence being um, released um, at, at that moment when you are in meditation, when you are waiting on the Lord, you 
uh, you're able to recognize. We use the word sense, but that's not necessarily sense in the natural, but sense in the spiritual. So you're able to recognize God's presence. And that awareness comes in so many different ways. Uh, God's presence is made known to us again in many different ways. Uh, yeah. And so uh, in, in the case that you mentioned, you feel like oil coming on you. So there is the recognition of God's presence. Uh, at the same time, we need to recognize why God has come, you know, why that presence is being manifested or made uh, available to us, right? God always comes with a purpose. So uh, that's where we need to listen uh, and be responsive. So you recognize, and then you need to respond to the presence. Sometimes, uh, and, and, and especially when you're meditating, God is coming to do a work in us. You know, so his presence is made known to us because he wants to come to do a work in us. Maybe it's, it's some, he's revealing something. Maybe he is um, bringing about a certain change in our hearts. Um, maybe he's come to speak certain direction into our lives. You know, so the, the, the reason for his visit can be manifold. It's our responsibility to recognize and to respond correctly, right? Now, uh, usually, if it's in your personal time, then God comes to do a personal work. When you're in a ministry setting, then it's for a ministry work. So that's one demarcation or one clear understanding we can have. So if I'm you know, in, in my time of quiet time and I'm meditating, the presence of God is there, then it's usually for a person, but God is coming to do something in me. And so I need to respond to that. But if like you're in a ministry setting, maybe you're you know, with a group of people or you're in, on, on the stage about to minister, and then you have the, uh, the anointing come, the presence of God come, then of course it's for a ministry work. And then you begin to flow in that direction. Maybe it's to teach, maybe it's to prophesy, maybe it's to release gifts, maybe at that time, uh, you know, maybe there's a flow of the healing anointing and so on. But in your personal time, many, it's usually God is coming to do something very personal. Um, I'll, just, I'll just quickly close with a, a simple example. You know, uh, suppose somebody comes and, and knocks on our home. Uh, on the, you know, uh, they press, um, uh, can somebody post the link uh, in the chat to our book, uh, The Presence of God? You can, if you just go to our Yes, Pastor. I, I was trying to go there while talking, but it's a little distracting. So if somebody okay. can just post. Okay. So uh, I'm just going back to this example. Uh, so somebody comes and presses the doorbell to your house. Uh, and you say, oh, you know, John has come. Okay, wonderful. John has come. So you've recognized John's presence, right? So John has come. He's pressed the bell. And oh, John has come. You're excited. Wow, John has come. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you feel excited. But if you don't open the door and welcome him in, then the purpose of that visit is lost because John is outside the door. Now, even if you open the door and welcome John in to your living room, oh, John has come, he's come, John, please be seated. And then you go, you go away and you're busy doing something else in the house. Again, the purpose of his visit is wasted. You, we have recognized his presence uh, we have even welcomed him in to the house, uh, but we've got distracted and we are doing other things. Uh, the purpose, why he came, we don't know. And maybe he came to bless us. Maybe he came to share some good news. Maybe he came just to give us, you know, just to fellowship. Maybe he came just, uh, maybe he came to, you know, uh, help us, whatever. But because we have got distracted, we have not benefited from his visit. So that's just an example where uh, when God visits us, basically when you recognize the presence of God, it's so important that uh, we, um, uh, we welcome. So God, I, I, can, I can feel your presence, God. Thank you so much. Oh God, uh, I just welcome your presence, God. And 
uh, Lord, what, uh, what are you coming to do? And then at that moment, you recognize and say, God, I thank you so much. Uh, I'm receiving this understanding. I thank you so much. I'm receiving this revelation. I'm seeing something I've not seen before, God. Maybe, you know, it's, it's from the word. And, and then what you do, you just focus on it. Don't let anything distract you. Because if we get distracted, uh, we could miss the purpose of his visit. Right. So, God, I thank you so much. And maybe you take your notebook and you start writing something down because you don't miss out the revelation, you know, or sometimes he's just changing your heart. You know, he's, oh, God, I thank you. You're changing my heart. God, I thank you. I, I was not willing to do it. But now, God, I, I see a sense of I see willingness coming into my heart. Thank you, God. So he's moving us from a place of unwillingness to willingness. But what we are doing is we are responding to his presence then we are able to receive what he came to give us. Okay, three key words. Recognize, respond, receive. Okay, in a nutshell, hope that helps. And you can go to our book on the presence of God. We'll learn some, a lot more. Okay, Pastor, thank you so much. That was helpful. Thank God you. bless. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful illustration and uh, in that explanation. And thank you, Abraham, for that question. Um, we also have another question from Zelitoli. Like starting Feb, uh, I will be helping in youth ministry and it will be my first time involved in youth ministry. So I want to ask what are some of the effective tools to reach out to the youth? Reach out to the youth. Yes, uh, can I request one of our faculty uh, to take up this question? Can I request, Paul, would you like to take up? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that question, Salutoli. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, praise God for the opportunity that God has given you uh, to, you know, start this, to, to be helping out in the youth ministry. Uh, I'll just uh, be very succinct, very small uh, answer. But uh, uh, firstly, uh, different places have different uh, a sense of uh, youth. So one of the things that we can do is try to find out what is the, you know, what are the youth more into in your location, your area. And some of the things that has helped us personally in Mangalore is some things that I can share, a few points. One is if, you know, uh, getting access into schools and colleges uh, would be a wonderful opportunity uh, for you to, you know, uh, bring out the gospel. And uh, especially now during these times, we see that you know, a lot of youth are going through uh, depression, suicidal tendencies, uh, uh, and at a very young age as well. So many are, have lost their parents. or uh, And so at a young age, youth are being affected. So, um, you know, one of the things that you can probably pray and ask God to open doors for you is through schools and colleges where as a team you can, you know, go out and uh, uh, reach out to these students uh, through life skills uh, sessions, uh, which, which will be able to help them. And other youth related uh, ministry could be, you know, maybe once in a month uh, you know, doing a youth concert is something that you can think about doing where you know you plan a date you plan the location uh, and then you can reach out to youth around your city around your locality uh, and uh, you know invite them for the youth concert and basically you know we have some song worship songs and then uh, share a simple message give an altar call uh, that is one thing that can be done and uh, uh, one of the uh, very important things that helped us personally in APC Manglo was, uh, you know, we we tried to bring in the word to the students. Uh, you know, the word was something that you know, sometimes we, you know, as youth, uh, they don't really spend time in the word or spend time, uh, you know, praying because they've got other commitments, college and uh, work, etc. Uh, but one of the things that we'd like to do is to uh, continually impart the the word of God into them, and uh, and we know that the word of God is uh, what really touches their lives. So uh, these are just a few points that I would like to share. Uh, I leave it open to the other faculty as well. Thank you so much, Zelitoli. 
Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, can I request Pastor Nancy, you would like to add on to it? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Dinah. Thank you, Paul, for sharing as well. Um, yeah, so just in addition to what uh, Pastor Paul has shared, we have some resources on our website. Um, uh, and I think uh, this would also help you, Zelitoli. I'm just sharing the link here. Uh, so yeah, there are um, certain topics that uh, are pertaining to young people. And uh, some of these topics have been included uh, in in the resources that I shared. Things like you know, self esteem, um, which uh, is is a key subject uh, for young people. Um, you know, thing about standards and making the right choices, having the right focus, developing the right habits. You know, as they as they uh, move into um, adulthood. So uh, th those are all subjects that are included in the resources. Also, when it comes to um, uh, their spiritual walk, uh, we that we can. Uh, um, you know, we we do understand that. It's generally in um, when when people are younger, that is, you know, their children and uh, in their youth, that you know they uh, give their lives to Christ. So it's a very crucial um, phase of people's lives. So this is a good time to lay the spiritual foundation to uh, help them encounter God, to uh, to you know present uh, salvation, invite them um, to you know walk with the Lord, be saved, and then. Um, uh, open them up to the things of the kingdom of God. So, you know, at, at this age, when they become passionate, um, they they learn to pray, they learn to worship. Um, you know, all, all of those things would would really stay with them and help them in their journey. Uh, and I just also uh, want to add over here, Zelitoli, that at APC, um, we have had this ministry among the colleges. Um, uh, the, the campuses, college campuses called as, uh, it, it used to be called uh, Campus Elevate. Um, uh, and in through this ministry, what uh, we were able to do is to go into um, colleges and uh, the subjects that I just shared in, in a nutshell with you, we were able to speak on these subjects, um, you know, um, in, in the colleges. We generally would get permission from the teachers. So it was a very formal and official thing. Um, and uh, uh, They'll give us an hour, and our team would go there. We would uh, um, uh, lead worship, if uh, and then you know also share or, on one of these topics. And towards the end, uh, have a time of uh, prayer, and uh, you know young people would respond. And one of the most beautiful things is that uh, in some of the colleges, we also had the opportunity to connect one on one uh, with the students and uh, personally encourage them. And, uh, um, you know, I still today, uh, in fact, one of the colleges where uh, we used to minister, it's a nursing college attached to a hospital. So whenever I go to the hospital, there are so many of those students still date. You know, they come and say hello. And uh, we learned so much during those sessions. And we still pray, you know, things like that. So um, it really stays with, with the students. So we, we just need to find ways of uh, um, uh, reaching out to them and the the campus ministry uh, is one of the effective ways that you know we found here in Bangalore. And I'll leave this open to any of other faculty to please add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy, for giving us in detail and different options how we can minister and and share with the youth. Yes, Pastor Jean, you would like to add on? Yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of points. Yes. Um, uh, so, Zilatoli, uh, you know, just adding on to what uh, Pastor Nancy and Pastor Paul had spoken of, <clears throat> we've also have uh, as part of APC a ministry for teens. Um, so these are within the um, uh, teen teenage uh, kids of APC. So we connect with them on a regular basis, like on, on a one month of basis. Right now it is online. But uh, something that I think becomes a very helpful tool is building, uh, like uh, Pastor Nancy had said, a one-on-one -on -one connection. Because um, in, in a group, um, uh, uh, when you're having a conversation or when you're when you're actually dealing with some content that may be useful for them 
having smaller groups really helps in this one-on-one -on -one connection where they're actually, they do come in and share and uh, are being ministered on a personal level with whatever their struggles are. So uh, in uh, because the youth ministry has a lot about um, understanding where they are at, what kind of a place or what kind of a situation they may be at, just building that connect connect and also knowing what could be their significant struggles at the time uh, at the age group that they are in. So, for example, you know, among the teens, we've commonly seen issues um, with regard to peer pressure, with regard to self-esteem, uh, relationship issues with, with uh, uh, family members. And this becomes, uh, you know, what we actually focus on becomes like a, a medium for them to connect back to uh, either life group leader or to the to the facilitator or to the pastor and there there in there in itself you know you're opening up a place of mentorship uh, again um and so i'd say even smaller groups also um uh, is something that we can focus on to have um, individuals who are of the same age or, or like-minded uh, uh, kids or youth coming together to be able to just share with one another, learn from the Word of God, and also be enriched uh, through the experience of learning. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Jean, for adding. And I hope, uh, Zelithuli, that was helpful to you. Yes, pastors, uh, that was very helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, can I just add, um, uh, Zerul, I just shared um, a research report. There's a link there from onehope.net. I'd encourage you to go and study that report. Uh, it kind of gives us a global view of what's happening among the teenagers and the young people uh, globally. Uh, you know, and uh, it's really good to understand what's happening, how technology, how media is impacting teenagers and youth, I mean, young, you know, in the early 20s. And therefore, um, with that understanding, you can then design your, you know, your outreach and so on. And so that's a very good, you know, research report. Um, um, that link is there in the chat. Uh, study that and, you know, you, you get a lot of understanding of, uh, you know, what's happening. Okay, um, Diana's um, lost the connection. Okay, Diana's back. Okay, go ahead, Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Sorry, uh, I lost my connection and I came back and I, I'm unable to see the questions. Okay, uh, um, I'll just read out the ones before. There's a question from Elisha. Uh, his question is, does a believer still need to pray and break uh, generational and family curses? even after faith in Christ? That's one question. And then, uh, so I will post that here, Diana, yes, so you can Pastor. take it. Yes. And then there's one more question also from Elisha. Um, another, so there are actually two questions. Um, both are from Elisha, so you can take these, please. Yeah. Sure, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Okay, so um, would any of our faculty would like to answer that question for Elisha? regarding praying over the generational curses. Yeah, I just try answering that. Um, Thanks, so the Master. question is, um, does a believer still need to pray and break um, generational family curses, even after faith in Christ? Um, so uh, now we know that, um, you know, uh, First Peter 1, I think, uh, yeah, 18, 19, uh, First Peter one eighteen says, um, um, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Um, of course, it's talking about uh, um, the Jewish traditions and and everything, and but we have been you know uh, set free from that by the blood of Jesus. And we've been redeemed, um, so that is a, a you know a powerful truth that at the cross by the shed blood of Christ we've been redeemed, and uh, specifically um, I think in Colossians um, I just put the verse 
Just one second. Um, Colossians 1, 13, 14. Uh, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, uh, the forgiveness of sins. So the, so the blood of Jesus um, uh, has broken uh, every hold of the enemy. And uh, He has, um, so the Lord Jesus, by His redeeming work, has conveyed us, you know, translated us, uh, moved us into the kingdom of Jesus. Um, uh, the Lord Jesus, the kingdom of the Son of His love, and delivered us from the power of darkness. So, so that's the uh, you know that's the present reality for every uh, believer uh, because of what happened on the cross. Now we know that it's a you know it's something it's a spiritual reality, um, but um, whereas in the soulish realm, you know we could still have strongholds. That's one, or we could have something. Um, or we could be struggling with something that has been passed on from generation to generation, right? Now, this whole thing of passing on from a generation, like we see in, um, I think it's in, uh, just give me a minute, uh, sorry. Um, um, Exodus, Exodus 20, I think. Um, yeah, Exodus 20. Is is where we um, like where we see that right? Exodus twenty and let me just read that verse just a minute. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Exodus um, twenty. And, um, so the Lord um, says Exodus twenty. I think three, four, five, uh, three to six probably. Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall make for your. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Any likeness that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hurt me, or hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and uh, keep my commandments. So uh, I think uh, yeah, we, we hear about uh, the generational... Um, uh, generational passing on of iniquity um, uh, here, right? So we, we hear this. But then we know that at the cross that we have been redeemed. Um, so um, so Elisha's question is, you know, uh, I know I'm a believer. So is, it, is there a possibility that I could still be struggling with the effects of the generational, um, you know, generational bondage? In fact, we have a, a pastor's written a book on uh, generational uh, bondage and breaking generational bondage. Um, I just put the link here, so uh, you could go through that. It, it gives a very detailed explanation of, of why and how and so on. But the the thing is that yes, uh, a believer could be struggling in the soulish realm, uh, like in the realm of our minds, uh, imagination. They could be. Um, some effects of that, or it could be in our body, you know, some kind of a weakness, some kind of a limitation. Um, but we can enforce the spiritual reality of what happened on the cross by taking authority, by um, by uh, pronouncing, um, uh, you know, our allegiance to to the Lord, and and we can break it, we can enforce it, and we need to do that um, uh, consciously. Yeah. Um, Pastor, if you would like to add something. Yeah, so, so, sorry, Dana, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Pastor, you would like to add on to it? Yeah. Um, just to summarize uh, what Pastor Jekma was saying, you know, so the answer is, you know, Christ has redeemed us. So our redemption is true, genuine, and complete. But Satan is a trespasser. Uh, so just like any other thing. Uh, he trespasses. That means he is a he violates. He does things he's not supposed to do. So our redemption is secure, but he trespasses that. So that and and so he, even though you know the sin of our forefathers should not affect us, he trespasses that, and so he you know tries to use that to, uh, you know to uh, cause certain. 
sinful behavior patterns, um, other weaknesses, uh, things like to try to come and attach itself to our lives. But it's a violation, really, because our redemption is secure. So that's where we stand firm and we enforce the power of the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus. Uh, we enforce with the word of God. And we say, you know, none of these things are going to have any effect on my life. So that part is what we do, is what um, Pastor Jacob was sharing. Is that okay, Elisha? Thank you, Pastor. Elisha, did that answer your question? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Thank you. There's another follow-up question from Elisha. How do you effectively carry out ministry to a person with physical disabilities? Okay, would Pastor Selena, would you like to take up this question? Yeah, sure. Thank you, uh, uh, Diana. Sorry, I don't know why my video is not. Okay, it's come on. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Elisha, for the question. Uh, I'd like to just read that question again. How do you effectively carry out ministry to persons with uh, uh, physical disabilities? Um, uh, basically, I think it would be ministering to them one-on-one -on -one, uh, unless you're going to a center or a place where you have uh, uh, people, uh, you know, more than one person there with a physical disability. Uh, basically, just, uh, you know, uh, get them motivated in life, um, you know, instill hope, uh, uh, encouragement, uh, so you could uh, do various uh, series that would re uh, basically, you know, uh, build uh, hope, bring about hope, uh, build encouragement, um, uh, give them, uh, you know, uh, 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 also run them through a series where, um, you know, they, they know their identity in Christ, who they really are in Christ, uh, that even in uh, with their difficulties, their challenges, uh, you know, st God still has a purpose for them. So you could do a couple of series on, uh, you know, fulfilling God's purpose for their life, uh, that knowing that God has a plan and a purpose for them, uh, and also do a couple of um, activities, uh, you know, uh, depending on, uh, you know, whether they can move their hands or legs, but basically you can do some activities or uh, with them, uh, get them into also, you know, a good worship time where they're experiencing the presence of God, um, get other people with um, uh, physical disabilities uh, just to minister to them. Uh, so they are also, um, you know, uh, motivated, uh, or you can just play videos of uh, people, uh, you know, who have physical disabilities and who have uh, overcome that or, uh, you know, overlooked their uh, their uh, challenges, their disabilities, and yet they have accomplished something in life. So basically do things that would motivate them, uh, build encouragement, uh, and get them to move on to, you know, seeing what God's purpose and plan for their life is and fulfilling it. And over to Diana. I think Diana's lost her uh, internet connection again. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, so yes, there. Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Pastor Nancy. Uh, thank you, Pastor Sikina. I just felt uh, like I'll add uh, some more to it. This is more, uh, you th you sh uh, covered the physical disabil disabilities part, but uh, I, I was reminded of, um, you know, people who are, um, we do believe in healing. We do try, we, we know that our God is a healer. He has a covenant of healing with us. Um, uh, and, you know, that that's what we, we uh, preach. That's what we pray for and minister to people in the process uh, sometimes you know uh, we we do uh, come across people who are sick and you know the they need to be taken care of so uh, you know people like that i was reminded um, that also uh, apart from sharing about uh, sharing the truth of god's word with them and you know journeying along with them when it comes to uh, 
uh, ministering to them, uh, it's also very, very important to display the, the love of God. Um, because we, we see in Romans 5, it says, you know, God showed his love. Um, uh, and, and, you know, God God displayed his love. Uh, and and um, that was through what he did on the cross. And in the same way, personally, you know, I, I am challenge to display that love uh, because even in the person of Christ in his ministry you see that compassion so while someone is ill yes we speak God's truth over them but also minister that love compassion and care uh, one passage from uh, uh, Matthew 25 uh, is something that comes to uh, my mind Matthew 25 um, verse 35 uh, 36 and I'll post it for us here on the chat um, it says for I was hungry and you gave me food I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in I was naked and you clothed me I was sick and you visited me I was in prison and you came to me so it's also about you know practical demonstration of the love of God uh, to the extent that we can uh, and that also is you know ministry um, and that also is um, you know displaying uh, God God's love so just wanted to add that thank you Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Yes, I see Charles raised and you would like to add on to this. Please go ahead, Charles. All right. Um, can you hear me? Yes, Charles. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, in addition to what Pastor Serena and the Pastor Nancy answered, also ministering to people with disabilities, sometimes you might specialize also um, in a type of disability, maybe those that are physically either for the ear or for the eyes or what, or those that are lame. So you might find people that can also do that area, those that have studied Braille, those that do no sign language, all that. So you could also involve other people that have taken a special time in doing that and you can go with them and then they can be able to be of help to you so that you can also minister to these people, especially those that are having issues with sensory disability. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Pastor Selina, Pastor Nancy, and Charles for adding on to this question. Elisha, did that answer your question? Um, Diana, just a couple of thoughts. Yes, yes, yes. he did. Yes, he did. Thank you very much, Pastor. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Um, sorry, Diana. Yeah, sorry, Elisha, yes, for interrupting. Yes, um, I just had a thought, you know, like uh, some, some of us, uh, I think, I mean, personally, myself also, you know, we, we, we sometimes have questions on, you know, how to relate to people with disabilities, right? So sometimes uh, like we have this fear, okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, and, and sometimes we go to the extreme of maybe pitying them. And uh, sometimes we uh, go to the extent of um, kind of overreaching and being, you know, um, I don't know, maybe even talking louder or, um, uh, you know, different kind of disabilities, right? Uh, you know, maybe this, you see someone in a wheelchair and then we try to um, be over compassionate or something. But, um, uh, but I think the challenge is, uh, and, and the learning I think for us is to re relate to them as people. Um, uh, apparently some, you know, uh, I, uh, research was done and then they, you know, it, it's not like more. It's not like all of them are really pitying themselves. You know, they they are they are people and they are, you know, um, going about doing their stuff. And so I think um, something that we can do is learn how to relate to them, and not to pity them, not to look down on them, or not to be over compassionate. Just treat them like people with respect. Um, but also, if we can learn. Um, like I, I am really not an expert at this, but you know how to refer to that condition, you know, in a in a in a manner that doesn't um, insult them, um, or um, you know, I, I'm sure you know ex experts can say, okay, this is how you, you know, you talk about uh, 
of their condition uh, without really putting them down, without looking down on them. I think that would really help uh, us to relate to um, people with disabilities, especially if the Lord has called us to minister, minister to such people. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for adding to it. It is important. Um, yes, Thank Alexa. you, Pastor Jigma. Your, your, your input is, is very, very much acknowledged. It's very true. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Elisha, for that question. And yes, uh, due to poor connection, I lost uh, I lost the trail. So if there's any question that you have posted, can I request you to please repost the question? We have about five more minutes. Yeah, I also see a comment from Charles saying that uh, you're in Uganda. They say disability is not an inability. Very true. Thank you so much, Charles, for sharing that. Yeah. We have five more minutes. Is there anyone who have a question? Please feel free to unmute and ask, or you can post it on the chat. Or is there anyone who would like to share? Yes, please go ahead, Paul. I see your hand been raised. OK, we have two hands raised. Yes, we'll go with Paul. Yes, good, go good morning. Good morning. Yes, Good morning, my name. Uh, uh, there has been controversy over the vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, with some people saying it is demonic. So what is the view of the church as the church tried to seek the voice of God over it so that we informed our believers the right thing? I think it is important for us to seek the voice of God. What do we have to say about that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for that question. Can I request any one of our faculty to please take up this question? Pastor, would you like to answer? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, Paul. Um, yeah, Paul, thank you for the, the question. Um, yeah, so we're, from the very beginning, that's I guess it was the end of 2019, early 2020, uh, from the time the pandemic started, uh, obviously um, the uh, the response from the health community, uh, the medical professional, was to find a vaccine, and eventually that came out. Uh, now, for us as believers, how do we make a decision? You know, is vaccine a right thing or not? Um, is God for it or is God against it? Um, you know, is it is it okay or is it demonic? So um, I think one is, of course, we go to the scriptures. What do we find in the scriptures, right? Uh, and uh, in, in, we can look at the scripture. The, the written word of God is our foundation to start with. And then, of course, we also listen to uh, the direction of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you look at the written word of God and look at the Old Testament, look at the New Testament, I'm just going to very con be very concise, very quick here in a few minutes. Um, in the Old Testament, the Lord God, uh, and you know, we're, that was Old Testament times, he gave them community laws how to live, what to do, what not to do. That means he was telling them, okay, as a community, here's how you live. Now, he gave his covenant. I am the Lord, your healer. He gave his name, Jehovah Rapha. But in addition to giving a healing covenant to his people, he also told them how to live healthy. So we can read about this in the book of Leviticus and Numbers, in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. So, and he told them, as a community, you eat this kind of food, don't eat this. You live like this. Don't do this in a community. So it was not just a, a covenant of healing. There were dietary and community instructions on dietary and community living so that they could live healthy. So we see that in the Old Testament very clearly. And then other examples in the Old Testament. You come into the New Testament. Uh, we believe in the anointing of God to heal uh, but we also know that God has given us our mind to use. 
right? The renewed mind. And we could look at several scriptures, Romans 12, renewed mind, Ephesians 5, 17, Paul says, understand what the will of the Lord is. That means we use our understanding in un getting to know the will of God. Um, and so, you know, God wants us to use our understanding and God wants us to use the resources he has made available to us to take care of our lives. So he's not against that, right? So whatever he's put in nature, whatever he's made in the in knowledge, the understanding, uh, the resources he's made available to us, we use it to our advantage, right? So that's where, that's how we look at medicine. Medicine is not against God, but it's a resource that's available that we can use to our advantage, which aids it in, in, in helps us in moving towards what God wants for us, which is to live good, healthy lives here on earth. So looking at it from a biblical perspective, just put it in a nutshell, it's perfectly fine for us to use medical resources to help take care of our health, right? Whether it's preventive measures or just, you know, uh, remedial measures. Uh, it's perfectly fine. It's not contrary to the heart of God. It's not contrary to the mind of God. Uh, unfortunately, there's been so much of misinformation, wrong information about vaccines, about all these things, that it's caused a lot of confusion. And so that's where I think a big challenge is to dis distinguish between simple, genuine medical information versus all the wrong information, the confusions that are being caused, and sometimes this confusion being caused by Christians themselves, uh, and to leave that aside and just understand the heart and mind of God that he wants us to use the resources that he's made available to us for our good. So I'll close with that. So uh, I, our response has been from, from beginning, we've encouraged people in our congregation around here to get all their vaccine doses, uh, to take safety measures so that people we can all be in good health. It's part of, a, you know, as a community, we are caring for ourselves and for each other, similar to what God told us people in the Old Testament to do. You know, as a community, we take care of each other, you know, but he gave, gave the covenant of healing, but what was in the context of, you know, also doing other things. I'll stop for that. Hope that helps, Paul, and you can think about these things. Thank you, Pastor. That was a good question, Paul. I hope that answered your question. Okay, uh, we have Charles. Charles, you have raised your hand. And we need to close because we are yes. 8.50. Yes, yes, yes. We can okay. pick up Charles', Charles we can, next week. We can pick your question next week. Okay, as we are out of time, um, before we could end the session, can I request one of us to please close in prayer? Can I request Sister Rupa if you would like to close in prayer? Okay, can I request Zeli if? You can, if I'm audible. Zeli, can you close in prayer? Yes, thank you. Father God, I want to thank you so much for this wonderful session. I want to thank you for our pastors. Thank you for their life. Thank you for all the inputs that they have shared to us and whatever we have learned, help us to remember and also that we will grow spiritually in every aspect of our life. Yes, we will be a useful tool for your kingdom, Lord. And as we close this session, Lord, your Holy Spirit continue to guide us, lead us, Lord, throughout the day, Lord. We thank you, we bless the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. This was a fascinating time of discussion. Uh, thank you so much. See you all tomorrow at the Supernatural Hour. Have a great day. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, pastors. Thank you, each one. Thank you, thank Zeli, you. for your word of prayer. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.